Hello everyone, this is Daryl20 and welcome to episode 96 of FTB Revelations, where today I'm going to try to automate the Runic Altar. That's kind of the plan. So I'd like to do auto-crafting with the Runic Altar. Um, you, you might notice some of these grass blocks are dirt again. Somebody may have accidentally blown this up a second time while I was preparing for today's episode. Whoops. Uh, but I fixed it. It's all good again. <laughs> I've gotten good at fixing it when I accidentally blow it up. Look, I told you I was cheating, so I purposely made it so that I could accidentally blow things up if I made a mistake, right? I've learned that that was a mistake to do, and I've now made mistakes twice, and that's a problem. But anyway, uh, so between episodes, all I did was uh, accidentally blow this up a second time uh, and fix it all again. But everything's working beautifully. Uh, it's really working great. I also, real quick, set up a quick uh, keep in stock. So I'm keeping 10 TNT in that green under chest, the same thing we've been using for other keep in stock things. Uh, and then we keep 10 TNT in stock here with uh, one of these filter doohickeys on the south, right? Limited item filter. Um, so with that, uh, what we've got going is, 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 is the TNT being kept in stock here, auto-crafted by the, uh, AE system. Cool? Uh, today I want to see if we can automate the Runic Altar. I think that would be fun. In past episode, like, season, like, we've done the automation of the Runic Altar every now and then. It's been a while since I've fully automated it, but I'd love to make it so that we can have one Runic Altar to rule them all. Okay, and this is a challenge, right? Like anybody who's tried to automate the Runic Altar before knows that it ain't easy. Because you have to drop the exact right number of items in at the exact right times, uh, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to try that today with an Actually Editions dropper. Um, the Actually Editions one, by the way. Yeah, you're going to need one of you guys. You're going to need some of you guys. I don't have that many of those guys. But we got enough guys to do the Precision Dropper, right? Sweet. So your job is to drop items on the runic altar. We're going to want an interface, uh, and we'll probably want some AE2 stuff going on, right? Like you and a couple of you guys. I think that's only fair. Uh, and some cables to keep everybody uh, reasonably happy. Uh, and we'll also want a uh, ranged collector that we can whitelist what's allowed to be picked up here. Now we can whitelist how many things in the ranged collector? Uh, enough that we can have, you know, all the different runes and whatnot. Uh, that should be cool. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yes. I'm planning in my head how this is going to all work. And it might get a little bit shenaniganry. Uh, it might get a little bit, a little bit of shenanigans might be involved here. Um, we shall see. We shall see. So what I'm going to want is a chest that's going to sit here. I am literally building this in my head as I go along here. I have no plans. I, I did a very bad job of planning this out. Um, and I have no idea what I'm doing. I really did not think this through very well. Where am I in relation to? Actually, pretty close. Sweet. So your job, Mr. Glowstone Impulse Item Duct, is to be not connected there. Uh, maybe I'll use the proper wrench for this guy. Where's my proper wrench? Hammer. Doohickey. Mm, hammer in here? Oh, it is. Cool. All right. So you're going to... You're going to basically come straight down here. And you're going to grab one stone. And you're going to be a retriever that will keep one item in at a time. Whitelist. You ignored and that should vacuum up one living rock what you doing Look at all that bounce in the back do many are mini chests a thing in this pack oh they are that might be fun should we do mini chest i like mini chest i do like mini chests haha <laughs> cool Hey, good, you've got a living rock in you. Now, why are you all being a nuisance about the amount of 
living rock we've got going on. Why did you look like you, like, bounced? Right? It's interesting. So you're ignored. Whitelist. One item at a time. Total max items are extracted. Yeah. We got a lot of extra living rocks in here, didn't we? Didn't we get a lot of extra living rocks? That was interesting. We'll see what happens. So if I take that out of there... Why are you pulling so fast? You shouldn't be pulling that fast. Huh. I didn't think you would do that, smarty pants. So let's change it up. Instead of using you guys... We're gonna use this guy. And you're going to insert on brown, not extract, and we're going to have a limited item filter in here. And you're going to keep how about four living rock in here at all times. And then all we have to do to make this work is make you extract on brown. And then you should be groovy. Four living rock. Perfect! That's exactly what we want. But we will do the glowstone item ducks thing for this bit. So let's see if we can figure out. Um, so you're going to have one living rock in here when we want you to, right? Let's see. Let's see if we can pull this off, right? Whitelist one, cool. But only when you have a redstone signal going on. All right. So here's the deal, right? We want to teach applied energistics how to make the runes that we need. Uh, so to do that, right, we're going to want to prepare all the runes that we're going to need from a pyro logistic. So let's start with runes of water, right? Uh, maybe that's a bad example. Let's start with rune of fire. Fire sounds like a good rune to start with. Uh, so that's going to need mana powder and mana steel, nether brick, gunpowder, and nether wart. Okay, so we're going to want to teach that over here, right? Can we just do in processing mode? Would you be super cool to do that? Yeah, so you don't really need a runic altar. Uh, we technically need the living rock, but that's going to be supplied by the other thing, right? Now, while we're in here, we should probably also teach you how to make mana steals. And we should probably, but no, not with that. No, 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 not with that. Okay. Uh, and we should probably also teach you how to make mana powders. We'll choose redstone as the source. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to want another dropper. whose job will be to be that, okay? And you're gonna live right all up in here. Cool. And you will also have a ranged collector. Who can sit here, and you're gonna have a whitelist, right? And you're gonna get you so the interface how about you sit here interface and that gets you guys and probably some more things in the future okay and uh let's have a few things here let's see uh I'm, how's my a2 stuff guy doing good let's get you set up You've got plenty of channels, right? Yeah, eight, eight of 32 channels are in use. So I'm gonna just that, and I'm gonna find. I misclicked. There you go. Green is good. Okay, so with you being up and running here, we can now connect some smart cables. Okay, and we're going to want another interface. Grab a few extras, because yeah, you can always use more. Right? You could always use more. Uh, and that'll be the interface for the room. Right? So that should be cool. So you can go away now. Okay. So you're going to whitelist this. 
and this. And I should be able to test crafting this now, right? So I want 10 of these. Start. Cool. And that should be a fulfilled craft. Yes, because there's 10 in here. Uh, maybe one more needs to go in. Now you got 10 of those dudes. Uh, and then your job will be to item conduit out of there. All right, so you will extract on green, you will insert, and then everybody's happy. Boom, boom, boom. Crafting complete. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's the easy part of the automations, right? It gets harder from here on out, right? So this interface is going to pop up on this dude, okay? Uh, and you're going to have this thing in it, right? And then this is how we are going to automate this, right? We're going to say to make a run of fire, you're going to insert those items in here, right? And let's watch what happens when we do that. So we request a rune of fire, and we totally want you. Oh, your range is too close. That's right. You're gonna be a nuisance. Cancel that for a sec. Your range is too close. Yeah. So we want you in blocking mode. Uh, what do we want? Vacuum chest. Vacuum chests. I'm pretty sure we can specify. the range of, if I'm not mistaken. So we could put an item filter in here. And configure that for the mana doohickeys. Whitelist, whitelist, but your range will be only two blocks, right? Technically, he could probably be a one block range and be fine. Okay, now, um, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, let's test that out, right? So now we say, give me 10 mana. Eh, maybe he should be two. Yeah, we'll make him two just to be safe. I think that's probably smarter. Right? And then we, we definitely won't overlap over to here, right? That gives me some wiggle room with regards to this setup. Okay, cool. So now, uh, let's try that. And I'm going to take my magnet off for a minute. Oh boy, is my inventory full. Oh boy, is my inventory full. Boop, 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 Lots of things we don't necessarily need. And you know what? I don't think I'm doing integrated dynamics for a few minutes. We can turn that off as well. Um, so let's do um, our fire rune. Beautiful. Okay, so now you're going to get mana, right? And now here's the trick. You... We're going to emit a redstone signal with a certain power. I'm going to do this again. Okay, just to demonstrate. I wasn't ready for the power showing. See how it's emitting with a power of one right now? That means that the runic altar is crafting. Okay. When the runic altar has absorbed enough mana, the power will change to two, which we should see now. Boom. See? So power two. So power two means we've got enough mana. Power one means we're still getting mana and we're crafting. So what we want to do is measure when there's a power two going on here. And if there's a power two, then what we want to do is uh, trigger this retriever. Okay? So what we basically want to do is have you... And then we could have uh, these dudes with structural pipes, maybe? Yep, that's kind of what I want. Can you read that? Ain't never done it this way. What are you doing? 
You are just sucking up all the things. Stop it. Oh, I don't like when you do things that you shouldn't do no more. So did that turn off? Okay, that did turn off, so that's cool. Ugh, you're way too fast is your problem. I need you to be slower. Well, what we could do is use this guy. Extraction rate every three seconds as opposed to half a second. So that gives me three seconds for the retriever to work. I like that plan. Right, so we're gonna whitelist you. And you're gonna be redstone control that, and you're gonna be that. And you're gonna pull one per thing, okay? So now when I do this, he should get one of those and he should drop. Nice. And then what we really just need is a user with a wand, okay? So that should be cool. So let's make a quick wand. What is all this noise over here? I like how as soon as I looked, you stopped. That was smart of you. Oh, you know what? You're all full. Ha <laughs> Y'all's full. Okay. So I bet what the problem is, is we're not checking for mana. We should really be checking for mana here in addition to the cooldown and the burn time. Because we're going to waste lava at this point because we're not checking to see if the flower is full. So cooldown and burn time is going to hit zero and then it's going to place a lava source block, even though it's full of mana, and it's just going to waste our mana. Not the end of the world, but something we should probably fix, right? You just place another lava? Better not. Maybe you guys are working. Yeah, you guys are the ones working overtime. Okay, that's fair. Um, okay, and then user. So you should be able to use item on block all day long, right? That shouldn't hurt nothing. So watch what happens when I put this here, right? He should suck his, his thing up every three seconds. And then the redstone signal goes off and he ain't sucking nothing else up. Cool. That is cool beans. Right, and now we just need to add you guys to the white list here so that you can be range collected up and item duct your way to home. That's kind of cool. That's a different approach, right? I don't think I've ever done it that way before. Come on, Chief. All right. So then that should have completed our craft. Yeah, buddy. All right, so let's watch it. Let's watch that from start to finish, right? Now, you're going to be in blocking mode. Now, the other problem we have is similar to, like, what we have with the draconic, react the draconic crafting is that let's say we do fire and water, right? So we do fire and water and uh, at the same time, and fire is going to go in, and then it's going to empty this dude and he's going to be empty and then he's going to like say like oh i'm empty so i'm going to allow water to go in and it's going to start putting the water resources in right away right so like we can even demonstrate this right now right like we'll pop over to here and we'll get um the other runes added right so we should probably do rune of water minus you we could do rune of air minus you rune of altar not really part of the recipe and rune of earth Right, and that should be cool. And we can go put. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Rune of Earth. Rune of Earth. I forgot to clear your runic altar aspect. Why is there a hole right there? Dire, please. Clean up after yourself, would you, buddy? Come on, you're killing me. Try and keep. Try and keep your base a little bit clean, would you, Buster? Dire, please. Okay. So now, like, let's say we wanted a rune of Earth. Right? Craft that for me, please. And he's crafting, right? And now I say, like, oh, and a rune of fire, by the way. Watch what happens. Oh, look, we broke it. It's bad. That's not what we want at all. It's all broken. And everybody's sad. 
right? So that's bad. Also, you being here is not a great thing. All right, now we can leave them there, and if I'm not mistaken, it should be okay because they'll just sit there. Right? So when this is done, he'll flip his power up. He'll get his thing. Um, if this wasn't blocking and stupid. Okay. It's not terrible. Okay, so he got a couple of those things. So stuff went a little bit awry. Right? Uh, mostly because we didn't have you in here. That didn't help for sure. So a few things went sideways on that process. Cool. So that should complete the craft at least. So that wouldn't have been too bad, right? So what I'm thinking is we put the mechanical user down here. Disconnect this dude. Use item on block. And that's cool. And now everybody should be good, right? So let's try those again, right? We want earth. And we want fire. Right, so he's starting on earth, and fire ingredients are just going to sit there. Right? And then when he gets enough mana, he's going to put the block drop on top. And that'll turn off the retriever. And now fire starts. And then when he gets enough stuff, enough mana... The comparator will emit for power two. Retriever, go, complete, win. So not terrible, but I think it's important to probably do like we did down in the other thing where we checked how many items were inside the runic altar and uh, we disabled the the thing like we did with, uh, whatchamacallit, right? So like applied energistics, we're going to want that little doodad. The doodad. Technical terms. Emmy toggle bus. Yeah, you. Why are you only an inverted toggle bus? That's the one I want. That's the one I want. Yeah, Emmy toggle bus. Right. And then what we're going to have here is you to you. Right? So you're probably not getting power right now, which we can demonstrate by doing that. If he had power, he'd be putting stuff into the thing. Right? Uh, what we want is a redstone signal on the up. That will output brown. Sure, why not? Okay. Um, and for now... Let's just have a lever that's input brown. So when I turn you on, that should activate this dude and we'll see the living rock disappear. And then I turn it off and then that deactivates him and he'll say something like, you know, zero of eight channels or whatever. Cool. Okay. So that's gonna measure whether or not there's things in this runic altar, right? That would be the smart way to go. Now, we have a lot of sides of this runic altar covered, so we might want, um, yeah, what we're going to want is a phantom face. Okay. Man, I'm very used to having a magnet on me, by the way. I keep looking like, why aren't items going into my inventory? What's going on here? Uh, so Phantom Face, uh, Phantom Connector, this to this, okay, um, and then maybe I want you here, yeah, I think that would probably be better, I want this to be here, okay, this to this, he's happy, and then we want the RF tools inventory checker. Is that what we used? What do we use over here? Yes, inventory checker from RF tools. Mm 
inventory checker. At this point, this seems like a smart move to do. As does probably this. Okay, so inventory checker. We'll do that. We'll do that. Slot zero amount one. So if there's any items in here. And then the down will be input on brown. So you're telling me that, does that work, right? So if there's any item in here at all, he turns red. Perfect. Cool. Now we probably want to invert that um, mechanic so that when you're getting a signal, it turns off the thing. Luckily, we can invert the toggle bus, it looks like. Which I think means you're on at all times, right? So your channel's one. Right? Okay, good. So now, what my expected behavior is, if I craft earth and fire at the same time, it'll stick the resources for earth in, and then it'll turn off the toggle bus, disabling the interface, preventing me from putting the earth ones in until we're ready. Does that seem cool? I think so. Do we have the stuff for air, by the way? And eh, we don't know how to make carpets or feathers. Shenanigans. Well, let's test it out, right? Earth and fire. Ah, see, I can't even request it because <laughs> it went off so quick. Nice. Yeah, that's what I expect, right? Cool. And then you're having a problem. What's your problem? What's your, what's your problem? Are you turned off by redstone? I didn't know that. Is that a thing? Yeah, I guess so. So you know what I should probably do? Should probably... Hello. Good work, sir. And everybody's a winner. I like it. Cool. Right? And then I say, give me some earth runes. That's cool, y'alls. A little dire wiry, but I think it's cool. I think that's I think that's that's a repeatably automatable runic altar. Right? The real test will be when we try to do the tier 2 runes, right? So what does earth and uh, fire combine to be? Fire and earth combine into any tier, tiered up runes? Fire and air become pride. Or that's actually summer. Fire and winter. Fire and air. Fire and water. Alright, so let's teach you water rune. Right, because the only thing you need to know for water rune is probably just the fishing rod, right? So if you know how to make a, a water rune, then what we can do is we can test that, right? And then uh, the next tier of that, the one up from there, would be water and fire, right? So water plus fire without you is spring so if we wanted to make a rune of spring right here's the trick and this will tell us if we automated this correctly um and by the way i should probably add rune of spring to the whitelist here for sure but we'll get around to it right so runes we take out all the fire and the water runes so when we say we want a rune of spring we can hit next and they'll say here's all the things i gotta do i gotta craft water i gotta craft fire and then i gotta craft rune of spring dire please but i say start and it does its thing right so now see how it didn't drop and it didn't try to craft the water rune. So it's doing fire right now. And it's like, uh, I'm gonna get to water eventually. And it didn't push those water runes into the dropper. Now it can, presumably. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what I wanted to see. Okay? So by doing like we did with our draconic thing, we can stop the crafting until the prior one's done. 
right? Because blocking mode works by saying, is there an item in this inventory? Once it drops everything, the craft is not complete. It's still got further crafting to do, right? But blocking mode triggers because the inventory is empty. Oh, you're going to do that. Right. You're going to be a nuisance there. I might need to bring that down a level. Would that be like the end of the world? Probably not. I need you to be a little bit slower about picking things up, ranged collector. That's going to be a little bit of a nuisance right there. Right? Because ranged collector here, we might need a separate tier 3 altar. We might need a separate altar set up for tier 2 and tier 3. Because ranged collector is picking up the rune of fire and water because he doesn't know that we're crafting. Unless I disabled him with a redstone signal. Because you have a redstone mode, right? Yes. So if I said, hey, when there's an item in here, don't vacuum. That could work. That could work. Right? Let's do a vacuum chest. Let's do another vacuum chest. With a pulsating crystal. Right? That could work. And then we're going to want a filter. And you're going to go here, and you're going to be active without signal. Range 2 with an item filter for these runes, right? Don't I have runes of earth in here too? Yeah. Okay. So that now he won't vacuum up runes. Oh, right, right, right. Hang on. Uh, down. Output brown. Now, he won't vacuum up runes because there's items inside here. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. And then once we remove said items... He can vacuum it up again. Booyah! That's what's up. Right? So then you get these guys... And then your fire and water, right? So let's just, let's cancel this real quick. Just to validate, right? But hopefully I'm correct. Rune of Spring, next start. Did you, did you vacuum those things up first? Does it matter? I would love it. So what if we did this with you and you? I'm hoping that this means that it's gonna put the, the runes in second and that might be cool. So let's cancel you. Yes, that actually made a difference. Cool. So it makes sure to put the saplings in first. It gives the redstone detector time to turn off the vacuum chest. Oh, that is cool. It's working, right? And now the only thing we have to do is add spring to the whitelist of our filter. But other than that, we should be groovy. Right? So we waitlist him, and now it drops and it goes in, and that completes the craft, and we have a rune of spring in the inventory. Sweet! All right, I'm going to call that a wrapping up point for the episode. A little bit dire wiry, a smidgen of dire wire, but one runic altar that can craft all tiers of runes in theory. Uh, I, that's kind of cool, right? I mean, I think that's neat. I don't think I've done that before. I think in the past, anytime I've done runic altar automation, it's been, you need to have multiple runic altars, right? I think we just found a nice and clever way to fully automate the runic altar and do all tiers of rune crafting in one altar. And I think that's cool. 
Unless I miss something, but I think that's that's good. So for now, Doll20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, we'll come back next time and uh, continue to play uh, and, and automate all the things. All right, guys. Take it easy.